be it hippies or red rocks, this Penn Chalet exclusive from Robert Oster is bringing together some amazing vibes. If you've watched my other ink reviews, then you've seen me take a look at a few of the other Robert Oster exclusive inks for Penn Chalet. Well, today we're going to round it out and take a look at the final ink in the series, Sedona Red. Now, before we talk about this ink, here are a couple pictures of Sedona circa April 2021. As a side note, I'm able to see colors from all four of these exclusives in these two pictures, but today we're going to focus on the reds that make the sandstone rock faces of Sedona that much more awe-inspiring. Also, keep in mind, I took these photos on a very bright day in harsh midday sun, so they are going to represent more of the sandstone reds than if I had been shooting in good light with some cloud cover. Enough excuses for my photography, let's go ahead, get into the TLDW, and then take a look at the ink. Now, I'm already on record saying that saguaro green is my favorite of the four limited inks, and I'm going to stand by that statement, but I am going to supplement that by saying that this is a very close second. While this isn't an oxblood saturation level, I think that it hits a nice mix of the light and dark sandstone bands found in and around Sedona. Water performance was pretty good, getting a 3.5 out of 5 from me, and out of my Moonman T1, I found the ink to perform very well lubricated without being overly wet. This definitely comes out also in the dry times where I found it sub 15 seconds on both Tomoe and Rhodia. Literally, the only thing I could think would be to do Antelope Canyon as a different color, and combine that current color somehow into this one for the perfect Sedona vibe. But even then, I'm having to stretch for an even better. Now looking at the ink blot, this is why I'm saying my photography doesn't quite do the Red Rocks in Sedona proper justice. If you take a stroll through Red Rock Park, you can easily see the nice muted reds on the right as you drive off the main highway and onto the switchbacks leading to the park. The tones on the left, while amazing, are more of an artistic freedom with the color as a whole. So, departing from nature, I really do like these mids. They feel like a departure from sandstone red and fade over into flat-out crimson. Where it gets better, though, is in those transition tones. This ink fades into a very nice velvety red that becomes a deep, sheening black. So, as far as reds go, this is a good all-around package and a good addition to any collection. Moving on to those dry times, you can see here that on Tomoe, we're looking at around 12 seconds to dry, and on Rhodia, it's very close to the same performance. After the large discrepancy that we had with the Saguaro dry times, this consistency was a very nice reprieve. And moving on over to the last performance indicator, before we look at the writing, let's take a look at the water test. Once we get some water on the paper, the color lifting is immediate and somewhat disconcerting. In a way though, it's a little mesmerizing watching this red ink swirl to where the syringe had lifted away. Anyways, once we get the page dried off, you can see how wrong my first impression from the color lifting was. Not only do we have an indication of a gray ghosting layer underneath, but there are still parts of the writing where the red primary layer held firm. It's actually a nice performance, with me really just taking points off due to the secondary mess on my fingers from cleaning the water, and with it not being Noodler's level resistant. Now, this final part is what I think will help you decide if Sedona Red is right for you. Ignoring that I just sounded like one of those medication infomercials, this ink will provide a well-behaved and pleasant writing experience. I'm starting this one on Tomoe, and as you can tell, we are starting with those mids that were present on the left ink blot. And boy, those mids are consistent from this fine nib. This is one of those situations where if you are a slower writer and you love dark, bold inks, then this one will be a good match for you. As for you faster writers, you will potentially be able to flirt with more of the subdued reds, but you're probably going to need a fine or extra fine to really see those sandstone reds come through. I am also liking though, how this ink is constantly flirting with the crimson reds on Tomoe. If I had this one in one of my broad nibs, I'm sure that on this paper, I could easily get it to carry over into that heavy sheening territory. Finishing up on Rhodia, it somehow manages to get even bolder. And that puts me in an interesting conundrum. I prefer Tomoe. Even the new batch that I've gotten in a few of my notebooks that I use for personal journaling. But this ink has me seriously wanting to use it for a few things on that humongous A3 Rhodia notebook that I use for brainstorming. If 
Fun fact, I like to brainstorm in ink so my ideas have more permanence as I'm creating, and it forces me to be a little bit more deliberate with my thoughts and my actions. So a nice red ink like this, I think could quickly become an ink for that purpose. Aside from that, however, I think you can agree this is a nice bold red and a good way to cap off an exclusive ink collection. All four of these inks were well behaved in the Robert Oster tradition, and the colors were very well done. So that's our look at the final ink in the Penchalet exclusive Robert Oster collection. The video links for the other three are down below. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click on that Patreon link in the end card to support the channel. As always, don't drink the ink.